So, a lot of new viewers came in from my last video of 5 NASCAR drivers you forgot about, and I thank you all very much for hitting subscribe and enjoying my content. However, I noticed a lot of people not understanding the title of this series. I am not saying you for sure forgot any one of these videos. No, don't think that. Rather, I'm saying that the careers of these drivers were either lackluster or so short that they could be harder to remember as all. Now, with all that being said, let's go ahead and name five more drivers that you may have forgotten about. Jason Jarrett Many people know the famous Jarrett family of NASCAR. Not only were father-son combo Dale and Ned Jarrett great legends behind the wheel in their time, but they were also renowned for their commentary on NASCAR, particularly with NASCAR on ESPN. However, there was supposed to be a third Jarrett that you've most likely forgot about, and that was Jason Jarrett, the son of Dale Jarrett. While the two Jarretts before him were champions in NASCAR, Jason Jarrett? Well, there's not much there. From 1996 to 2005, he attempted to race in events in the K&N Series, Camping World Truck Series, Xfinity Series, and Cup Series. And there were plenty of races that he did not qualify for, including having zero actual starts in trucks in K&N, although he did try to qualify. However, between Xfinity and Cup, he does have 42 career starts, including 40 starts in the Xfinity Series. But in all of these starts, there's nothing. No laps led, no top 10s, just nothing at all. However, where there was not success found in NASCAR, there was success found in ARCA, where Jason scored two wins, 34 top fives, 67 top tens, one pole award, and led 466 laps. He also finished second in the standings in 2001 and 2003, along with a third place finish in 2002 and a fifth place finish in 2004. However, after 2005, he wrapped up his driving career in both ARCA and NASCAR, and just like that, the third generation Jarrett's racing career was over. Upon retirement from racing, he went on to work for his father's company, Dale Jarrett Incorporated as a project manager, and in 2010 he began his new and current role as a spotter for Jermaine Racing, and since then he has worked for teams such as Stuart Haas Racing, Nimco, Colic Racing, and Richard Childers Racing. So although driving was not for this Jarrett, he has still managed to find a role to fit in with NASCAR, and today he resides in Hickory, North Carolina, along with his wife Christina and their family. <laughs> Greg Sachs so first, I want you to think back to the 2010 Subway Jalapeno 250 at Daytona International Speedway. Now while Dale Jr. was making history in his father's famous number 3, who was driving Dale Jr.'s number 88, which we saw him in in the February race? Well, after the video last week, we certainly know it definitely wasn't Kelly Byers. Well, it was none other than Mr. Greg Sachs in a car sponsored by Grand Touring Vodka, which the owner is. Greg Sachs. This would be Greg's last race and he started 7th and finished 21st while the owner of his car went to victory lane that night. But who was Greg Sachs before this race? Greg started his racing career in the modified series before transitioning into the upper series as a developmental driver where he would actually win his one and only cup series race in the July Daytona race in 1985 for the Guard Motorsports. So although Greg Sachs was even a cup winner, I really can't say that made for an overall strong result in any of the series he competed in, so I'll just name his overall results instead of each individual series. In 327 starts across 7 racing series, Greg Sachs recorded 2 wins, 10 top 5s, 31 top 10s, 6 pole awards, and he led for 504 of 67,294 laps ran in his racing career. So although he's technically a winner, I can't say it was a a really great racing career compared to others. As mentioned earlier, today he and his sons are currently partners in Grand Touring Vodka and he now resides in Ormond Beach, Florida. <laughs> Hermie Sadler Maybe a lot of you know Hermie better for being the brother of driver Elliot Sadler and his on-air role in NASCAR broadcasting. You may even know Hermie from his on-air role of TNA Impact Wrestling, and specifically his feud with performer Ron Killings, better known today as R-Truth in WWE. However, when he wasn't in the ring or in a studio talking NASCAR, he was behind the wheel as a driver, and he has still competed as recently as 2017. Sadly though, there's not a lot to say about his driving career compared to his brother and as well as his TV roles. Unfortunately, he never recorded a top 10 in the Cup Series and he only led for four laps during his time in the Cup Series. Sadler did win two Xfinity Series races in his career, however, but they did come back in 1993 and 1994. Really, that's basically all I can really say on the career of Hermie Sadler. Today, you'll mostly find him on Fox Sports 1 as a pit road reporter for their NASCAR coverage. <laughs> Scott Speed 
The thing with Scott Speed is that I don't really like to see him as a bad racer because his early career was rather good. He actually became the first American to win in Formula 1 in 2006 since Michael Andretti did so in 1993. However, even with that win, he was still let go in 2007 by Toro Rosso and was replaced by the now very successful Sebastian Vettel. When this happened, Scott Speed used his partnership with Red Bull to look towards American stock car racing, where he began in the ARCA series, where he would record 4 wins, 10 top 5s, and 18 top 10s, and he was so close to winning the 2008 championship before Ricky Stenhouse Jr. would wreck Speed in the final race. After 2008, many people thought that Speed had a lot of potential on stock cars, but maybe Red Bull had too much faith too fast, as in 2009, he was full-time for Red Bull Racing's number 82 car, and he ran a very limited nationwide series schedule for Michael Waltrip's number 99 car. Maybe Speed should have even ran more races for Waltrip's team, as he scored one pole award and eight top 10s in his 13 starts in 2009, but he didn't. He wanted to focus more on the Cup Series, and that's fine. I can understand that. If you've got the sponsorship, if you've got the opportunity, I can see why you'd want to do that. But in his two Cup seasons for Red Bull Racing, he led 40 laps, scored three top 10s, and in November of 2010, Speed was released from his Red Bull contract to make room for Brian Vickers, who was returning from heart surgery. This led Speed to a lawsuit against Red Bull, accusing them of violation of his contract, and after this, he just bounced around rides in NASCAR up until 2013. After NASCAR, Scott Speed has found himself succeeding in the world of rally car racing where he does seem to be happy with his current position though. <laughs> Paul Wolf. Yep, that Paul Wolf. Before Wolf was calling the shots as the crew chief of Brad Keselowski, Paul Wolf was trying to make a career as a NASCAR driver. From 2000 to 2004, he made 40 starts in the K&NE series where he scored 9 top 5s, 19 top 10s, 2 pole awards, and he led for 395 laps. He also had 16 starts in the Bush series where he only scored 1 top 10 finish. In his final season driving in 2005, Wolf was originally supposed to drive the number 6 Dodge Charger for Evernham Motorsports, but after 4 races not finishing in the top 25, and failing to qualify for a race in Mexico City, he was let go by Evernham, replaced by Casey Kane and Jeremy Mayfield. After that, he ran a few more races in the Fitz Bradshaw Racing's number 40 and number 12 cars, and after this, he was done as a driver. It'd be a few more years before we'd see him back in the NASCAR world, and in 2008, he began his career as a crew chief, which led him to Penske Racing in 2010, where he'd win the Nationwide Series title with Brad Keselowski. After that, he moved to the Cup Series with the number 2 car with Brad Keselowski in 2011, and in 2012, he and Keselowski would win their first and only Cup Series championship. Today, Wolf remains in this same role and most likely has job security for quite some time. And that does it for 5 more NASCAR drivers that you may have forgotten about. What did you think? Know any other forgettable drivers you'd like to see in the next few videos? Drop a comment down below and make sure to give this video a like. If you'd like to support Danny B Talks, you can pledge to me on Patreon for as low as $3 a month, just like this guy right here. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell and follow me on Twitter at Danny B Talks to know whenever I upload. As always, thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye guys.